Hello there guys and welcome back to my channel for yet another player ratings and live reaction live stream following another Chelsea game, another Chelsea game where we bottled it, another Chelsea game after an international break where we can't get a win. Um, first of all, my apologies for no content during international break, things just are too busy these days. I, I am very sorry. I am trying to be better, we'll see how that goes, but hey, we are here for every game at least, so that is something. Um, ladies and gentlemen, First of all, please subscribe, hit the like button because fuck me, I'm depressed. I shouldn't even swear this early. But, mate, pff, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, my head's gone. The head is absolutely gone. See what the worst part about this today is? It's all that revisionism that I saw on Twitter over the last two weeks. Where these two weeks where we didn't have Chelsea games, where we didn't have Pochettino quotes, where seemingly at least a certain percentage of the fan base seemed to, I don't want to say warm, but almost accept that Poch is here now, try to find positives about him, think, oh, he's saying, anyway, we're going to make Europa League because obviously, because we're obviously going to be Burnley, we're obviously going to be Sheffield, we're obviously going to be United. People just making these fake realities up. I, I understand that, you know, you it, it's copium, you know, we, we all need to cope one way or another, but I just can't, like, just because we didn't play for two weeks didn't mean we're not shit anymore now. Like, <laughs> just, people just, just forget. It's the collective nostalgia, isn't it? People yeah, just... It's like we think back to three years ago as soon as we don't play for two weeks. Like, no, we're, we're, we're not European champions. No, we're a bunch of ball jobs is what we are. My God, how much can you screw things up? Play all right after the first 10 minutes. First 10 minutes were shocking. Play all right, have 50 trillion chances, miss all of them, then somehow get a little bit lucky with the ref's decision. Now, I think it was a penalty, even though some people would say even the penalty itself was soft, but most certainly got lucky with the fact that Burnley had a man sent off. Although, you could argue maybe that even actually made it more difficult for us than it would have been had they continued playing with 11 men, the way they play football on the company. But hey, even the manager got sent off. That didn't help us either. Then we score 1-0 just before half time, and you think, well, it literally couldn't be any better. Goal before the break. They go a man down. The perfect moment to score. Fantastic. But you forget about one thing. Mr. Pochettino. Because every time you come out of the out of halftime, we are now terrible. And we're asleep. I don't know if they give them sleeping pills at halftime or what they do. But that's what it feels like. Obviously, it's not Poch's fault himself that the goal itself was conceded. But it's just a continuing pattern that pretty much every week, every game, we are worse and terrible for the first five to ten minutes after halftime. How does this keep happening? Like... And then Poch is probably sat there, well, we're actually fourth in the table. Uh, do you know what I mean? That's probably what he tells them. Oh, uh, my God. I, I can't even act anymore. One nil up and a man up. And we bottle it twice. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oli, um, you've already said a couple of words, but thank you for coming on. As always, I appreciate it very much. But like I put in the title on, on the thumbnail, it's just, it's, it's, I don't even want to say it's becoming. It has become unacceptable and untenable in my opinion I, I just don't see why it should continue like i know there's pe there's people saying yeah what if it doesn't work on the next manager either well so in life right if it if it doesn't work out with one partner do you just stop looking for one and say okay just gonna be single for the rest of my life no most people don't do that either so just because you have a shit manager and the manager before that was shit as well does not mean that the next man can't be good and maybe the next one is shit as well, because with our owners, chances are they're going to appoint another shit one. But that doesn't mean we need to stick with Pochettino, though. That doesn't, need, that doesn't mean we need to stick with a guy who thinks we're fourth, even though he causes injuries. Like, I know Enzo played and, you know, didn't get injured today. But the fact that he risked him today, that's why we have half of these injuries. Because for Enzo, it worked out today, as far as we know for now. But it didn't work out for Ujuku. It didn't work out for 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 Von Kunku. It didn't work out for Reese James. It didn't work out for Lavia. All of these people were rushed back by Poch and injured. Okay, I can't say that. But anyway, <laughs> you, you know what I nearly said, Oli. But uh, please, Oli, <laughs> tell me something positive. But I know there isn't anything. So please just share your frustration. Let's just vent with everyone. Everyone in the chat, let's just vent together, shall we? Because what else can we do? Yeah, I mean, uh, what can we do? It feels like everything that we try to do as a club, you know, we just end up going around in circles, making the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, you know, I, I tweeted it just a short time ago. You know, it feels like Pochettino is having no impact on this team. It feels like that he is a footballing non-entity, a, a black hole of charisma and tactics. You know, it because it feels like... At the start of the season, we were being cost. We were it, individual errors were costing us, and individual brilliance was winning us matches. And nine months, ten months later in the season, that's still exactly the, the same. You know, individual errors are costing us games. Individual brilliance is winning us matches. So, what is Pochettino doing? 
you know like like what what effect has he really had like i know again we're going to talk about the data and all the potential and everything for this squad but the fact of the matter is he's not putting it together on the pitch none of them are and we need to figure out a way to to get it right because you know if if we play like that like we play today against like some man united or against everton or whoever else we've still got yet to play we're going to have no chance of finishing in the european places absolutely none and we've already done a really we've done a hell of a job of doing that so far uh, you know, a hell of a bad job. I mean, you know, it just feels like it feels like we're not going to get Europe. It, it, that's what that result felt like. It felt like you know Newcastle won and we dropped points, and so it felt like you know the the idea of playing European football this se- next season has sort of swung away from us now. It doesn't feel like it's as much as in our control as uh, as it was before. Because let's be honest, everyone batters Burnley. Sheffield uh, wasn't it. Uh, no, not Sheffield. But uh, I think Arsenal beat them 5-0 with an XG of 2.3. We had an XG of nearly three today and scored two goals. <laughs> I think our, our XG was over four, I thought. Was it over four at the end? Uh, my commentator said it's nearly three, like with five minutes to go. So I oh, okay. We must, yeah, we missed a few big chances. Well, I think that might end, have been but... before Sterling sitter as well. So Yeah, fair enough. It, but yeah, it just it feels like... Yeah, like Burnley are, are, are absolute, you know, dross in terms of the Premier League. They're, you know, good side for the Championship, and they and we they saw that when they stormed it with a with a record number of points. But they've been really poor this season, and we absolutely should have walked all over them. Injuries, suspensions, regardless, um, you know, by hook or by crook, we had to find a way to win today, and and it's on the team and it's on the manager that we didn't. Yeah, exactly. And you make an important point, and as much as I am against Poch and as much as I want him sacked, we cannot sit here and pretend that the chances that Palmer, Jackson and a couple of others missed in the first half, Mudrick as well, he arguably had the biggest, um, Sterling at the end, that's not Pochettino's fault that these guys missed those chances in front of goal. That's not his fault at all. And you could even argue that their attacking play was actually better than most other games. But what is Pochettino's fault is that we can't even control a game at home against Burnley. And the fact that that is the case and that people have started to accept that and just be okay with that and try to only look up, but we're playing all right going forward, though, you know, like, and that makes it okay that we can't control the game against Burnley. And it's just, mm. it's just, it's just baffling. I mean, fantasy PJ does as here. Burnley missed a bunch of chances too, Lawrence. Is that Potter's fault? Yes. Yes, it is. Because that essentially indirectly comes from the lack of control in midfield. Yes, you can say, oh, the defenders make mistakes or the goalkeeper makes mistakes. But I have to highlight this comment here quickly before I let Adash speak. Sorry, bro. Um, by Kuzi, who says, Petrovic is garbage. Not good enough. And comments like this really piss me off. Like, really piss me off. He was our best player. Until that mistake. Yes, he made a bad mistake. And obviously, he's then not the best player anymore. But he made three super saves in this game. And then you're sat here because he made one error. Petrovic is garbage and good enough. By this logic, Palmer isn't good enough because Palmer missed three sitters today. Or not sitters, but three big chances, shall I say? Like, does that mean he's not good enough? No, it doesn't. It means he missed some chances. He made some errors. That doesn't mean you're not good enough. So the one of the few positives of this season has been Petrovic, who we found out of nowhere this MLS keeper who turns out to be miles better than, than 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 Robert Sanchez makes one mistake his first mistake at Chelsea literally his first real mistake you could argue his first game at Everton when he came on to replace the injured Sanchez so if you want to be harsh the second mistake and you put out comments like this ah, support the players <laughs> go against the ownership and the manager not the players man these are these are the least at fault man Adash thank you for well, first of all, waiting until I finally come to you. My apologies. Thank you for coming on as well. I appreciate you very much. What can you even say? <laughs> it says it there. It, it ends all square. 2-2 two, two against flipping Burnley. You know, Burnley away is literally probably the best ground for us in the last five years. I, every time I feel like we go there, we score like three or four goals and we have a lovely day out. And still, going into the home game, we couldn't be sure that we'd win. And in the end, we didn't win. And it's just, I just can't, I just can't bear it anymore. Like it just keeps and keeps and keeps on happening. And, but don't worry, the people will still now go to the fact, ah, oh, next week, in a few days, when they've, when people have slowly forgotten about today, they'll say, ah, but we've only lost one home game since October. Okay. But we've drawn 17, mate. Thank you for having me on, first of all. Um, I mean, I'm just tired. i just sick and tired of the same old shit happening uh, constantly. I mean, this game, I mean, in the first 10 minutes, to give you 
perspective as to how bad we were, Pochettino actually got out of his seat and started shouting at our players. That should tell you how bad we were. And that was the theme. Yeah, because he never stands up, fat fucker. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, at the end, he even kicked the chair. I, I read. I didn't see it myself. But... It's the most. It's honestly, it's the most uh, athletic thing he's done in twenty yeah, years. He probably just read about that. Tuchel <laughs> broke his toe in a team talk, so he thought, "Ah, oh, I need to do this as well. Maybe the fans will love me then." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm, honestly, <laughs> honestly, if yeah. he got a red card, that would have been so much more beneficial to us. I would have rather Poch getting a red card than Company getting a red card, and it's not even close. Because I, I mean, if we had Craig Bellamy as an assistant coach, <laughs> I'm not saying something because it's fucking Craig Bellamy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, you it, you keep going, Adash. I just bring on a, a, up a different tweet in the meantime. But uh, I mean, when you try to put it down to something, obviously we've just said now it's not Potter's fault that we miss chances. People in the chat are discussing, "Oh, is it Potter's fault? The players' fault? Clown legs' fault? Clear leg fault? Whatever term you want to use for them, right?" <laughs> but the, that's that's even the next part of the problem that we're trying to play this stupid little blame game. We we, we all know that it's a co- combination of the of all of it, and we all know that the crux of it are the owners. Like they essentially make all the mistakes that lead to all the problems we have now. Or would you disagree with that, Adash? No, I completely agree, and I think like like you said, I mean, obviously it's the players' fault, but that doesn't exempt Potch from the issues that we experience today. I mean, even. Even just letting go of all of the chances that the individual chances that we missed, his decisions, which he is in control of, such as the substitutions that we made, the kind of tactics that we played, and the lack of midfield that we had, that's all down to him. That's not down to the players. And so it's a combination of things, but it's A, his job because he's the coach to take responsibility and make sure that as much as he can, he hides our players' deficiencies and he tries to mm-hmm. build a system where they can actually thrive. And second of all, every single one of our players is freaking 13 years old. So yeah. obviously they're going to be inconsistent. And so as a coach and as fans, we need to budget that in and we actually need to acknowledge that fact. But Poch is one of the only players in our club, one of the only people in our club who isn't 13 years old. So he needs to naturally step up and take more responsibility. And he's doing the opposite of that, which is me for me personally, where the largest share of blame goes. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it's just like even the, the commentator on Sky Germany, where I was watching, was talking about that Pochettino is, keeps just making weird comments in press conferences, talking about how the data suggests we should be fourth. And then the commentator was just reeling reeling down basically like okay there's this one stat where yes we should be fourth but there's all these other stats where we are terrible and Poch yeah and the only fourth. stat that actually matters is where we are in the league yeah and now we're fucking no. or maybe 12 now i don't know god knows what it is does it matter like honestly the last time i've paid attention to the actual table is like two and a half years ago <laughs> like literally who gives two shits we, we've been between eighth and 15th for two years straight and it's just it's when you think about this, th- imagine anyone telling you that in June 2021. <laughs> that from oh. at some point in 2022 until 2024, we'd essentially permanently be in the bottom half of the table. Like it's just unbelievable. But I want to every single up- one of our players who won the Champions League wouldn't be in our squad right now. Yeah, and the one experienced defender is the one we never use, even though we concede two goals every single game. People People forget this. We've conceded two goals pretty much all of the last God knows how many games. It's unbelievable. But let me bring this one up because, to be honest, we shouldn't have been surprised at all. So the international breaks, results after international breaks this season. So you can yeah, you see, manager, same squad. Um, you said this this morning in our in our chat, Loz. And the second I saw this, I knew we weren't winning today. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was just it, my only question was, would Burnley be worse than this curse? And they tried. Had a man sent off, gave us a penalty before half time. The manager even walked off. But still, the curse was stronger. After, the, like I say, after this September international break, nil nil against Bournemouth. To be honest, not even the worst, worst result in the grand scheme of things compared to other games we've had. I can't remember if that was at home or away, I'll be honest. Then that 2 2 against Arsenal, which, to be honest, performance wise, until Sanchez had the howler, maybe still our best game until this day in the grand scheme of things. Up, to, up, up for debate. I suppose, but certainly up there, in my opinion. After November international break, we got probably the worst defeat of the season, 4-1 away at Newcastle. But it's not just there. It's not just Poch. It's not just these players. You go back years under different ownership, multiple different managers. Last year, 
2-0 um, at home to Villa. That was Potter's last game, I'm pretty sure. Um, the year before, Rüdiger scores the goal of the season, essentially. Um, we go 1-0 up, and even under Thomas Tuchel, we proceed to lose 4-1 at home to Brentford. And then we all remember this one, 5-2 against, against West Brom at home. Thiago Silva having the worst day of his life. Um, when you see this, am I surprised? No. But how does it even get to this? Because judging by the fact that this happened, well, now four years in a row, we can't just say, well, it's Potter's fault or the owner's fault because this... So why does this keep happening? Like, I'll go with you, Oli. How do you explain that after every international break, we're dreadful? Like, do we just have too many internationals? Is is that the problem? But, I mean, okay, Villa, Brentford, West Brom, they certainly don't have a lot. But Arsenal and Newcastle have plenty. So what's the excuse then? I don't know. I, I, I think it's more of an issue around just the general fitness of the squad. I think the squad still isn't fit enough. Um, you know, we see stories all the time of of uh, of people in the squad going in down injured, and you know, people picking up knocks and all of the you know all of this stuff. And but I think it's, I think is the reason. Surely, after international break, we should be at least a little bit better because they they should be a little bit fresher than usual, right? No, so like... I I don't think it I don't think it works that way. I I think the fact that they're already unfit when they go away, they're not going to magically become fit by the time they get back. You know, I and I think I don't know whether it's I'm not, not more fixed, less tired. I, I would have hoped maybe, but also maybe not. Okay, you know, like well. we're talking about like Enzo and stuff. You know, with him having to fly back two days ago. You know, he had one light training session before the game and still. You know, had to play the full ninety. Um, you know, they're either. I don't know. It's I don't know whether it's the it's the communication between the staff. I don't know whether it's Potts' training methods. I don't know whether it's like our, we have specific members of staff who are disagreeing on how to do certain things. I don't know if it's our methods are just you know not founded correctly and we're just doing the wrong thing with the injuries. But I think personally, the injuries pay a. Uh, well, less the injuries, the fitness of the team and the lack thereof. And and that really does feel like a failure for me uh, in the way that the club's being run at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Adash, I'm not even going to get you on this international break drama because I've got another set of stats for you before we get into player race and these things. Because this is, this is the real bad one. This is the real bad one. Adash, I'll bring you back in. Look at this. So here's a few games and results from earlier this season. Um, Half-time scores. And final scores. Against West Ham, we were drawing 1 1 at halftime. Lost the game 3 1. Arsenal at home, 1 0 up at halftime. We even went 2 0 up in this game. Drew the game 2 2. Man City at home, 2 1 up at halftime. Drew 4 4. Now, maybe we can take one a bit out of the equation because City are very good. But still, Manchester United away, 1 1 at halftime. Even though we were absolutely diabolical, I still feel the worst performance we've had this season by a distance. Lose the game 2-1. Um, and to be honest, should have been 7 if United were any decent. Man City away again. 1-0 up at halftime. Drew 1-1. Again, I'd almost take this out of the equation. Now, sure, because we bottled it at the end, not. But against City, I accept it a bit more than against all the other lot, right? Brentford. 1-0 up at halftime. Drew the game 2-2. Burnley. 1-0 up at halftime. And a man up. Drew the game 2-2. A possible point out of just these games mentioned here, and I'm sure we've dropped points in a couple more others that, that Rob hasn't even mentioned. Maybe not. Who knows? But possible points out of all of these games is 19, as you can read. But guess how many we got? Five. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say, ah, oh, look at where our problems are. But this is a serious issue. And it kind of points back to what Ollie was talking about a second ago, the lack of fitness. Because yeah, otherwise, we just trail why off. Is the second half always so much worse? Uh, that and that's kind of what I what I think. I, I don't know. It feels like in the first half we always seem to perform better. We always seem to score more goals. We always seem a bit more focused. We always seem to be able to implement whatever it is the manager wants us to do, um, even though most of the time that's nonsense. Uh, and then in the second half, it all just falls to shit every single time. I don't know if I don't know though if that's like if Pochettino's tactics are just myopic like you know like so singular to the point but all like the fact that there basically is none so that he's really easy to find out and so it only takes a quick kind of tactical you know tweaking at half time for that to actually you know be you know discounted right but it doesn't feel that way it feels more like the um that the players are just losing steam over the game uh, and sometimes we win because of that and like despite that and sometimes we don't Absolutely. Adash, your thoughts when you see these half-time issues, second half issues, obviously touch on the, the international break stuff as well if you want to. 
Yeah, I mean, in terms of the international break stuff, I think, like you mentioned, that's been a historical theme. I thought perhaps maybe the fact that our players had two weeks away from Poch would be a good thing, but turns out his impact and effect on our players is so longstanding that even two weeks away from him can't uh, shake his lack of tactics. But I think with regards to this, maybe it's just my naivety, but I fail to see how a team consistently over a season without without Europe can trail off so consistently, especially with a manager who has been heralded as somebody who who makes his teams extremely fit and incredibly fit to the point where he injures our players in training. So I I don't really understand how this is possible from a fitness standpoint. And so for me, it lands... I, I mean, there's obviously some some level of fitness issues, but for me, I think it also comes down to mentality where I think um, we lose confidence, we lose focus, which is probably natural with a team as young as we have. But... I think that might be a cause of this issue in addition to the fitness as well. Absolutely. And I mean, Oli, I'll take it back to you. This comment here of a fantasy PGA tour, he says, if we had more experience in the team, could we have seen this game out? It could could we have seen many of these games out better? Do, do you think it's a as much as it's maybe fitness? Do you think it's a, a, a an experience thing as well? Or do you think that's well an, an easy excuse when you have a young team? Or oh, not excuse, but explanation. <laughs> yeah, I think it's not quite just that. That's certainly going to be an element of it, though. You know, if we, I don't think anyone would disagree that if we had like a, I don't know, two, if you had like two or three Azpilicueta kind of experienced level players in there, I think we see that game out. You know, uh, I, I think we, we just manage to see the game out. We, we, you know, we, we don't make the same mistakes. We stay organized. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe some of the players are so young that they just can't concentrate. I don't know. And and as a result, you know, like they, they need someone to either hold their hand through the whole thing, but because there isn't, they lose concentration and then they make mistakes. I don't know. Um, but at the same time, you've got to recognize that, like, you know, you got Dezassi out there today, you know, who who had a, didn't have a very good game at all. Um, and was he's, what, like 26? You know, you had Sterling came off the bench and didn't really make an impact at all. He's, you know, he's experienced as well. Uh, Thiago Silva was playing in the team for ages and we, everyone was saying he was our best defender and I don't discount that, but we weren't winning games. So it, it's not quite as easy as as easy, easy as just having more experience in the team. I think we need, I don't know, it feels like there, there's just more to it than that, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. I'm going to just trying to bring up a couple of more things here because they are just so scary and so concerning. Um, it is it is diabolical. Adash, I'll ask you the same question first, though. Do you think experience would more experience in the team would, would help us with situations like this for you know seeing games out? Or do you think it's it's more on you know the the fitness aspect and and that's not true actually on average through the season yes on the day today we fielded the younger team um but anyway um Adash you, your thoughts from that point of view I mean a younger um a more experienced team wouldn't have changed the fact that we had one midfielder for about the last half an hour of the game and so they were able to completely bypass that every time we went on the attack and they countered us but I mean I would say I would say it would definitely help us, not necessarily, it may not have helped us today, but I feel like over the course of the season, I mean, you have this huge list of games that we've essentially bottled. And I think across the season, we would have seen at least some kind of impact or positive effect of having some more experience and leadership. But evidently that's not possible because uh, that's our motto under, that's the exact opposite of our motto under this ownership, which is the sign 15 year olds and make them all into the best uh best young players in the world apparently uh project 2030 hmm. that that whole thing of the way we buy young players the only explanation for that is still if we end up getting quite a severe transfer ban that's the only explanation for what they're doing there and now that could still happen and maybe they know it and that's partly why they've done it but if that isn't coming it's just it's just out of this world. I mean, but my question is the fact that we had the our transfer ban would also be for the spending that we're doing right now on those youngsters. So 
it's a case of where yeah I, I don't think we'd actually get a transfer ban i think we'll we'll keep within the numbers of the current spending we'll sell the likes of gallagher and shallow we'll make sure of that um I, I think it's more likely that we get some sort of punishment for old doings of the old ownership but will that lead to a transfer ban i don't know how likely i it feel is like that's more likely to be a points deduction in any case yeah but, no yeah. i agree more likely that's what i'm saying that's why i'm saying it's i still i don't see it as particularly likely that we'll get a transfer ban in that from the context but that's the only explanation i have for the way to go about it but i just brought up our recent results right going back to the cup final um against Liverpool, and you take that out of it we have had five games in a row five games in a row against lower league opposition on two occasions against brentford and against Newcastle, and against the team that second bottom in the Premier League who had a man sent off for the entirety of the second half. And we conceded two goals in each of the last five games. Four of them at home. Like, if Jose Mourinho was dead, he would be doing somersaults in his grave. Because what do you mean five games in a row you concede two goals? What do you mean four home games in a row you concede two goals? Like, how bad can you even be? It's that's genuinely the worst thing about everything. And yes, you can talk about individual errors, but my, I go back to it. Is it really worth punishing the most experienced players that we a player that we have in the squad over a tweet of his wife, and instead concede two goals every game? Is that worth it? Like, is is that the way one should be going about it? Exactly. Silva is the problem. Remember when people were saying that? And remember when after the cup final, people used the cup final as a, as proof for why we are why we are better without that, uh, Thiago Silva? So what's happened the next five games then? Again, when honestly, if someone has the stat, when was the last time Chelsea conceded two goals in five consecutive games? Has that even ever happened? You know, like, has that even ever happened? Maybe when we got relegated in the 70s, man. Because otherwise, when on earth would this last have happened? It certainly hasn't happened in our lifetimes. I'm sure of it. I am absolutely convinced and sure of it. But, Oli, is this to you also the single biggest issue at the moment? Obviously, when you take out the, the, grand, the grand scheme problems, like the ownership and stuff. But, like, we've been all right going forward. Three goals, two goals, three goals, four goals, two goals. Plenty of goals to win each of these games. Like we can we can even talk about our oh, Jackson misses these sitters and Palmer misses these and Mudrick misses those. We still score two goals. <laughs> if you yeah. score two goals at home, you should be winning. I mean, most of the time, yeah, you'd think so. But um I my guess is, is it's largely in conjunction with a lot of the issues we've had. Um it, especially how many times the back line have has to have had to change this season. You look at someone like I don't know. Take Arsenal for it as a good example. Their backline's barely changed all season, and they and you can tell. You know the way they play together, the way they work together, it it, it works very well. Um, but it seems that because uh, there are injuries, or Pochettino likes to tinker, or tactical reasons, or whatever else, we have had about a million different combinations of defenders this season. Um, and it looks that way. It looks like people aren't really used to playing with each other. It looks like the defenders are always kind of a bit scatty and a bit confused. The only time we don't really tend to look confused at the moment is when Colwell's playing. And back when he, what he probably got injured, like what was it, five games ago? Was that when he got injured? You know, like or, I mean, he was injured kind of recently. The cup final? I feel like he might have still played the cup final. He might have done. I can't remember, but it, like it, it seems that maybe it's coming. Um, in conjunction with him getting injured, that this kind of runs happened. Sure. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know, man. I, I think we just need to pick a back line and stick with it. Um, but we can't because of <laughs> our injury. That, yeah, exactly. We can't because we never have played. I'm sure if we, if we wanted to, I'm sure we would, but we can't. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if we could, even if we wanted to, like I say, we, we constantly have someone injured. So now it's Gusto, right? So even if he wanted to play oh, the same man. back four next game, he can't. We know how long he's um, out for yet, because uh, like if it if it's long, we should just actually liquidate and cancel the season. Uh, it's it been so like hands, nice. The way he was holding his, his leg That's behind like, me. That's like two months, isn't it? Yeah. Like if It depends on how bad it is, I guess. Could be Jesus. four to six weeks, could be worse. Ask Chalobah. He was out for eight months with a hamstring injury. Ask Ask Lavia. He's been out. He's out until past the end of the season with a hamstring injury. So that's just amazing. But yeah, I mean, Adash, the, the, the goals we concede, the biggest issue at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I, I think everything is just an issue. But I think, yeah, I mean, this is like, this is genuinely a disgrace. This is like, I don't even know if Burnley have this, have done this in the last five games. 
I mean, honestly, I'm actually I'm gonna search it up right now because you look that up because I'm pretty sure I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Burnley won their last game two one. Oh, imagine winning a game. Yeah. And so well, we won most games. of these five last games, to be fair. And, yeah, it's and conceding less than two goals. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that's also not sustainable. I just think even the games that we win aren't necessarily sustainable because, A, the manner in which they happen, which is very rarely, if ever, convincing, and B, the fact that we we just rely on Cole Palmer. That's just the reality of our season, which is that we essentially just completely rely on Cole Palmer. And he shows up, he does something, or he scores a penalty. Even the penalties, which are which are essentially gimmies, we have to rely on him because nobody else in our team is apparently capable of scoring penalties. And yeah, I mean, I think the defense last season, it was a case of we couldn't score to save our lives. And this season is just, we cannot stop conceding to save our lives, even despite the fact that I still think uh, Petrovic has been one of our one of our best players this season in kind of in isolation, which is which makes it all the more interesting that we've been conceding so many goals. Absolutely. I actually agree with that 100%. But I think it's enough talking about bigger issues, shall I call it, or um, just issues with the manager and all sorts of things. Let's get into these player ratings, shall we? Um, and unfortunately, we need to step it off, step it off, start it off with Petrovic. Um, three maybe two really good saves in the game. Nothing you can do about the first goal, if you ask me. But quite a lot he can do about that second goal. Um, he had so much of a hand on it, should never allow it to still go in. But unfortunately, he did. So this is where it's really tough. You know how I always say the goalkeepers are a bit different to the outfielders and often we can see two, three goals, but I'm like, okay, but it's not none of it. It's the goalie's fault and I might still give him like a 6.5 or a 7. On a day like today, it's even more difficult because until that howl at the end, I would have, I might have been giving him an eight, maybe even a nine. But with that howl, how many points do I take off? Because obviously, it also not only was it a big mistake, it also cost us two points. So it's huge. Um, and I think with that, I, I'm gonna say six point five. I still want to say ever so slightly above average because of a few very a few very good days before. But I can't. I, I absolutely cannot go any higher. Again, I mean, NX at four. So yeah, fair enough. Maybe I'm even still being way too nice. But I still think we can't just pretend like the good saves beforehand didn't happen just because um, the the mistake happened. Do you know what I mean, just like for Palmer when we get to his rating, I don't think we can pretend that the that the missed chances didn't happen just because he scored two goals. But um, how do you guys see it, Oli? I'll start with you. What would you give Petrovic with that last mistake in mind, but also the performance up until then? Um, yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you know me, Loz. I, I, I'm a person who really, uh, I base my ratings a lot off of um, the impact that somebody has in the game. And um, and in both senses, Petrovic had a really big impact on the game today. You know, goalkeepers and strikers are kind of like that. They do have big impacts in games where they're called upon a lot. He was having a really, really good game. Like you say, probably an eight or a nine's worth. Like some really, really solid saves. Definitely was keeping us in the game at times. And then he goes and just does that. Where the like it just almost like slips through his hands. It's such a butterfingers kind of moment. It it like you know, it, as a goalie, I imagine you're probably a bit embarrassed to concede that really. And as a result of that, man, I I don't know. I I I think for me. I would probably hit him at about five and a half. I know maybe that sounds harsh, but that one mistake mattered so much in terms of how the game then went on to end. And it is harsh to judge people off of one moment like that, but I just couldn't put him any higher. I, like, I don't feel like a six would be right. You don't feel like a six would be right? Sorry. Yeah, I don't feel like a six would be... Uh, like Rating him as a six would be right. Oh. I, so five and a half is is the highest I can go. Okay, I hear that in a way. I hear that as well. I'll be honest. It's it's like the difficult part for me is I even when I look at it the way you do in terms of how if you impacted the game, if you didn't make the saves beforehand, we're already like two or three nil down. Yeah. So it's like in a way he did impact the game beforehand too. And that's what, just... that's what I was saying. He impacted the game in in multiple ways. And but it's just unfortunate that the biggest way, arguably, that he impacted the game was was when he you know slipped the ball through his hands. I'm I will really say, it would have been a pretty routine save. 
Should have been. Adas, um, before I let you speak, first of all, welcome everybody that's joined from Lewis's stream. Appreciate it very much. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, shout big out up Lewis, man. My guy. My guy. Um, Adas, a 6.5 from me, a 5.5 from Molly. What would you give Petrovic today? I would be a little bit more generous um, than Oli. I understand where he's coming from, but I would say, um, I guess, if we just kind of substituted one of the other saves that he made for this one, I think you would be looking at a different kind of rating for him, which is, I don't think is fair. I think it's difficult to judge goalies. Um, I mean, for one thing, he was also at full stretch um, when he did that, so I'm not excusing it at all. It was a mistake, but it's also a little bit harder to control your fingertips when you are at full stretch and when you're in the air. Um, and I also think the saves that he made were so good and they did keep us in the game that I wouldn't be as harsh um, to him. So I would probably agree with Lawrence's 6.5. I think just the sound of a 7 is a little bit too too high for me. But yeah, I, he definitely wasn't the issue today. No, I agree. Well, in a way, yes. In a way, no. But He was, no, he was an issue, but he wasn't the issue. Yeah. But I don't know what the issue was. The, the the issue was the collective, and that's a big, even bigger issue than if any individual was the issue. But yeah, overall that leaves us at a six, regardless. And we move on to the centre backs, and um, let's start with Dizazi. Um, the I think the only player that has started pretty much every game this season, maybe at least in the league. I'm not sure anymore, but he's certainly been the most fit player um, in the grand scheme of things, um, alongside Gallagher. Um, I don't even know what to think. Was he at fault for the second goal? No. Was he at fault for the first goal? No. No. Was he? How did we even concede the first goal? I can't even remember. <laughs> my, my brain is literally a blank. And I, I don't know. Like, what do I gift his ass? We conceded two goals. They had way too many chances than they should have It was have the done. fluky outside the boot. Bremer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True, true, true. And that obviously mm. isn't his fault if you want to think of it that way. Um, the only thing is he scored, but missed the ball with his head and handled it. And therefore, it was then a handball. But then again, we were we went 1-0 up later anyway. So would that have changed much? I don't think so. That that whole thing was a weird one anyway. I think it's a right decision to disallow the goal because he did touch it with his hand. And the rules are, no matter how lightly or how significantly you touch it, it's handball. The problem is he touched it like here. Which, if you're the screen is a bit too small, let me make myself bigger. Touch it like here, right? The problem is if offside they count with this one. So how can you not be allowed to score with this, but be offside until here? Makes no sense. Um, yeah, it annoyed me a bit that that was ruled out. I can't lie. Yeah, but I, like, by is, the rules of the game, it's not a goal, but if it, it, it's one of them, isn't it? Where you like you feel a bit hard done by by it. Absolutely, especially because I, I felt that he was pulled by the defender, and if he wasn't getting pulled by the defender, he would have got his head on it and not have handled it. So therefore, if it's not a goal because of handball, surely it should be a penalty for obstruction. But that wasn't given either. So um, what do you do? Um, but yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I've got to give him a five. I just don't think the defenders deserve higher ratings when you can see two goals to Burnley and the amount of chances that we did give them. Because, I mean, how many chances did they have in the end? Because flipping hell, it was a lot. How many shots did they have? Where, where am I seeing this? Why am I not seeing the bloody goal shot? Uh, they had 18 shots. We had 33. What a mental game. They had seven shots on target. We had 13 shots on target. We missed, according to football, seven big chances. And they missed three, mind you. They missed three big chances. Uh, oh, no, we had a total of seven chances and missed five of them. Brilliant. Um, and they missed three big chances and had three big chances. So the goals they scored weren't even big fucking chances, man. Do you know what I mean? Oh, just a disgrace. But... Um, I'd ask, I'll go with you first. What would you give to Zazi? Yeah, I think a difficult one. I think I didn't really notice him too much. I remember there was one point where the ball got crossed in. I think it was for the one of the saves that Petrovic made where Zazi was all the way out in, at right back and we had no right center back and there was literally nobody else in the box except for Buddy Ashiel. Um and I think just generally... Is that Zazi's fault or is he pushing out because other people are out of position? Difficult to debate, I suppose. But I mean, you can't push out if there's zero people to cover you. No, but you have to. You still can't let a guy cross. Like, mm. you're better off someone closing down and only one guy being in the box than two people being in the box but giving someone 20 yards of space. Yeah, uh, I, I, mean, I, yeah I agree. I don't remember the exact situation, but yeah. 
Um, I would also probably go with the five. I don't think it was a it was a great performance. Also, I felt it should have been a penalty. It it was a handball, but it was also a penalty because he wouldn't have used his hand if he wasn't being held back. And it wasn't like he was being like just kind of tugged back a little. He was being held back and basically restrained to getting the ball, which is why he had to resort to using his his arm to actually turn the ball home. But Hey, it is what it is in the end. It is what it is in the end. It's very interesting. The expected goals for the Zaz himself is apparently 0 0.94, which I guess if he headed the ball instead, it would have been. But XG on target, <laughs> which means after you've shot, essentially, is 0 0.98. But I'm like, but it was disallowed for a handball. So how can this even, that even exist? I don't know. But regardless, Oli, I guess it still counts Zaz, regardless. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, but but the part that he like the, for the stat to happen, you need to touch the ball. But the part that he touched the ball with was deemed illegal. So therefore, how can it be a stat anyway? Um, two fives for Dzazi. Is that what you'd go along with? Would you go lower? A lot of people seem, you know, the, the Chelsea boy would have gone two. I've, I've seen. Well, Jay said five's probably a fair. But how do you see it? I mean, I would have gone to like four and a half, five. So I'm happy with the five overall. Like, yeah, just thought he. Like you say, when you've conceded two goals to relegation fodder, you can't really be all that high, can you? You know, it, 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 you know, just can't do it. it um, like I said, thought the goal on on average maybe should have stood. I, I thought we were a little bit hard done by by it, but I recognise the the rules of the game. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, he was average today, bang average. Yeah. He was, unfortunately. He was, unfortunately. All right, um, let's move on to Benoit Badiashu. First time back in the team after injury. Honestly, I was a bit surprised that he did start. Um, then again, maybe I shouldn't be surprised by this anymore because of, obviously, the way Thiago Silva is being treated. But he had some very interesting stats. Passing accuracy, 99%, 84 out of 85. That's also quite a few more attempted passes than Dizazi had. So you'd think, okay, fantastic. Uh, long balls, three out of four. Pretty brilliant. Passes into the final third for a centre-back, 11. Pretty crazy. But then you get to the bad ones. He attempted zero tackles. He apparently cleared one off the line, which I'm not sure when that would have happened, but anyway. Um, but then we get to the even worse ones. Ground duels. He only was in one. Not sure how that's possible, but was only one. That one he lost. So zero out of one. And then the worst one is he was in five aero duels and won zero out of five. How? Bro, you're like... 6'4". Exactly. Exactly. Like, it looks even taller than 6'4", mate. And how have you won zero out of five? Because that one of the one the saves that Petrovic made was actually from where Badia should completely just misjudged a cross and just, I don't know if he jumped too early or if his position wasn't right, but he just flew under the ball as he tried to head it. And I'm like, mate, if this happens to Gilchrist, fair enough. Because he's sure. But you're when you're Badia should, you're flipping massive. How are you losing five out of five aerial duels on a day? I mean, I know it's Burnley, but Burnley aren't exactly the Sean Dyche of Burnley anymore, Burnley either. So this is just a bit disgraceful. But on the ball, he was good and better than Dezazi. So it's like, what do you do? Um, in the grand scheme of things, I think because of how many important headers he missed, even though none of them led to goals, I'm going to give him ever so slightly lower. But in the grand scheme of things, there's not much between them, I would say. Oli, um, why don't you take over from me? Because my cat is seemingly locked in the wardrobe behind me, so I need to quickly <laughs> release the cat from the wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, while Loz uh, takes away uh, his cat out of his wardrobe, just remember to like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. That's the best way to uh, to keep seeing these streams when you want to see them. Loz is a great, great guy and a great YouTuber so uh, and a great streamer. So, yeah, give him a like, give him a follow and all of that. Stuff. All right, I actually meant you can just talk about Badia Shield, but that was even better. <laughs> even better. There you go. There you got your plug. Um, but, yeah, I thought Badia Shield was all right today. Um, I... Like you say, the, that those heading stats are absolutely diabolical. But it was nice to see like a, a an offensive side of uh, of one of our centre backs actually doing well for a change. Actually true. Um, thought he looked reasonably calm on the ball. Like you say, ninety nine percent pass accuracy for a centre back is is pretty good. Um, he was playing it safe a lot, but he was trying a few things as well. He was spraying it forward from time to time. Yeah, um, the, yeah that, that I, one I, misplaced pass was a long ball because he had four yeah. out of five long balls. So. If you yeah, only miss exactly. one pass, it's gonna be that one. So yeah. Uh so yeah, I thought he was I, I thought he was all right today. He he was okay. I don't think he was quite as bad as you you maybe thought. I thought he was probably better than Dazazi on average. So maybe I'll go five and a half. 
I as as you were even talking, I might I was already considering at least pushing it back up to a five. So I will do that, and we'll leave it as a five for now, and we'll see what Adash says for the final rating. Adash, now I've pushed it back up to a five, a five and a half from Oli. What would you give by the issue, bro? Oh, yeah, I think um, it's tough. I, it's it's kind of tough to put a number to it. To be honest, he didn't seem as bad as the stats laid out. Or maybe I just didn't notice all of the duels that he lost. I did remember the one, he did make one important block. Um, he did make one important block. I don't remember when exactly in the first half. Um, when the player kind of, he could have easily scored. He had like an open goal, basically. Um, but yeah, I think the defense as a whole, pretty poor. I don't know exactly who was at fault for the for the second goal for the header, but I know Badiashil was in that area because um, whoever scored who I don't remember who scored the second goal, but he kind of made a run towards the near post. Oshea. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was there was a weird when I honestly need to see it back a little bit because the, the guy closest to O'Shea was Enzo. But obviously we're not necessarily fully man marking, so you can't just say okay, it was Enzo's man. It's not yeah. like I, whatever happened there, it was the it was all wrong because he had a clean clean header, you know, totally free at the front post. Yeah. Um yes, yeah, so I, I, I remember seeing Buddy Shield there, but I'm not gonna assign any blame because I need to I would need to watch it back. I would probably say uh, maybe like a 4.5 or a 5. Uh, I'll probably go a little bit lower with the 4.5 just because those stats really Fair. did kind of... Fair yeah. Overall, that, that, that leaves us at a 5 regardless. Um, I mean, Kuzi says these ratings are way too generous. These players got spun by 35-year-old Jay Rodriguez and a South African. Y'all are soft. I'm not quite sure why you saying the word y'all and then you're using a ne negatively as a South African. But well, anyway, um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> what? I don't understand. I mean, maybe I slightly agree with what you're trying to say in terms of that the ratings are way too generous. I often think that about our ratings in hindsight. But the problem with that is that I very rarely think it's it's individuals may, like being the big issue. And it's like we have like obviously we're trying to rate a full 90 minutes, right? And 95% of games, we are the better team for large chunks of each of those games. And then we have moments and periods where we where we screw it up. But that doesn't completely like cancel out that there was also positive parts, and that's why you often get turn out with kind of roughly average ratings. But I, I still see where you're coming from, I suppose. Let's move on to the fullbacks then. Um, let's start it off with Cucurella. Um, Not a good game from him, I will say. Got himself booked. Okay, passing accuracy, to be fair, 98%. That is pretty good. But And he nearly scored with that flying header, which that would have been good. Um, two out of five ground duels. It's not great, is it? Zero out of zero aerial duels. So can't complain too much, I guess. But if they had... Well... To be fair, most a lot of their crosses did come from the left as well, but they had crosses from both sides, and neither of the fullbacks dealt with it particularly well. I thought Cucurella got running behind a bit too much. And see, in general, I'm 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 not one of these people that's usually too mad about if a winger gets in behind a fullback because I'm like, okay, you're attacking, so you can't always be there. That's why you know it, it's a team game, and the the centre back needs to shoot the cross. The problem is Cucurella, even though I know he had a flying head away, nearly scored. Cucurella doesn't really attack. You know, it's not like Ben Chilwell who makes bombing, you know, runs down the wing and then cross the ball, try to get in the box to score pretty much every occasion. That's not the case for Cucurella. Cucurella is kind of more around the midfield area rather than anything else. And if that's your position, how you can run behind so much, like then if you're not high up the pitch, you have no excuse for people getting behind you constantly. So that just needs to be a bit better. Um, I don't... I didn't feel like he opened the game up for us at all. If anyone did that, it was Badia Shield from the defenders I'm talking about. Well, we'll go to, we'll get to him, but not Cucurella. So therefore, I don't think he was particularly good defensively. He didn't do anything going forwards. Okay, he held possession well. Fair. I, I feel a bit because I, I want to say five four now, but that almost makes the other two feel even more too nice. I'll say four and a half, but we'll see what you boys think. Adash. I said four and a half now. Some people, you know, I could maybe even be convinced back to a four. What did you make of Cucurella today? Yeah, again, I mean, very similar thoughts to you. Um, didn't think he had a great game. Um, but I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what more he, what more he kind of could have done. Well, 
like with his limitations, but I I feel like I feel like I would agree with. Can I quickly jump in on that because the weird yeah. thing about Cucurella is he was actually a left midfielder when he was still playing in Spain for Getafe before going to Brighton, and then initially at Brighton he played as a left wing back and was still everybody was saying he was very good. He was obviously great at Getafe. The guy was moved to the Premier League and he was doing well there. And then only towards the end, I think Potter was it Potter or was it? Yeah, it must have been Potter. Was starting to play essentially as a left centre back in a back three, with the left wing back essentially being a left winger and. Cucurella kind of played this hybrid left back, left centre back role, but he used to be a winger or a left mid at least. How is he? Like he's so bad at going forward that no one even like asks him to do it anymore, and that's just I don't really understand how how, how you how that can happen from you you like being a winger in the past. Like it's baffling. I mean, what do you think about this? And it's not even you made me think of this because you said it with his limitations. I'm like, but are these even his limitations? Where have these limitations come from? If he used to be a winger, I don't know, man. And it's not even just that he's bad at it, but it's also that it just looks like he's so uncomfortable in any place as you go further up the pitch. And it does not seem like the kind of player who would have had a past as being a left mid or as somebody who kind of would have had. So, like I said, I think it's a complete mystery, but uh, yeah, I'm not really too sure. Fair enough. What, what race did you give him overall? Um, I'll go for a four fast yeah i mean like i say i do still maybe feel a bit harsh now because the full the, the center backs are uh, always a bit more to blame for chances and shots on target that happen against us and again they had eight and it's burnley and they were down to 10 men for a full half so the fact that they have so many that that's more on the center backs and is on the fullbacks so i do feel a bit harsh Gucurella ended up with a lower rating here but yeah, we'll maybe see. bring the center backs down to a four point five. Each. That's kind of and... what I was thinking. I, I think I think the the chat might be right. I think well, I think all the all the defenders probably need to come down by like at least one for me. A full one, you reckon four? Yeah, at least. Like you know I, what? Let, let, let's give them a four. Why not? Fair enough. Do, uh, do you listen, want to it... your four rating then for 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 Kukurela? Dash, sorry, Ali, I'll go to you in a sec. I would. I feel like going maybe maybe a three point five, or yeah. Uh, yeah, I would probably go for a three point five. It seems a little bit harsh, but hey, we were shit today. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, JC says there should be a three max, but like, what makes it a three max? Do you know what I mean, like, but disaster is aerial. Uh, sorry, but it shows aerial deals, sure. But I don't know. It's a it's a tough one. But I, I think I think it's okay if we at least go down to a four. Um, Oli, for Cucurella, what would you say in comparison to the other two as well? It's, it's, how do you judge it? A fullback that did just very little, didn't really defend much, didn't really attack much, but kept the ball, I guess. Yeah, that it's a tough one for Cucurella. Um, I, I actually personally would have him a tiny bit higher than Badia Schiller and Dezazi because I thought, and again, like when the way I talk about it, the way he affected the game, he really just kind of didn't. Like, he, he didn't really do anything going forwards or going back. To be honest, barely noticed him most of the game and yeah. um, there was a couple of players like that today and we'll get to them each as well as we get up the pitch but um yeah it just just wasn't his best game um but i think that's more indicative of the whole team than him uh for this one i think fair this would rate would you give him in total then you said a little bit higher does that mean four and a half or four and a half yeah is what i would go with i guess overall that leaves a set of four ones more <laughs> we go over to malagusto then um but that was a weird one. I saw people like Connor, he's been on the channel before, obviously. He was talking about how Gusto had a good first half. And I don't know, because the first 10, 15, when the whole team struggled... He was, he was asleep for the first 10 minutes. Yeah, and then he woke up and all of a sudden was really good, which is like, so again, how do I... That's a theme for Gusto. He does switch off at the start of games. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I don't know. Maybe he just needs to get that first tackle in or that first... He needs to get clamped once and then he's awake. I don't know. But... Otherwise, once you look into his stats afterwards, first of all, he created the most chances in the game with five. He had 93% passing accuracy, which is good for someone that plays like him. Three out of four successful dribbles, three out of five accurate crosses, which is really good. Um, three, uh, two out of three tackles, seven out of 12 ground duels, at least one out of two aerial duels. From the outfield, is probably one of the best players, um, really. But injured at the end, obviously not that that will harm his rating, but still just fucking frustrating. And a poor start to the game, which... Petrovic had to bail him out with that super save uh, uh, very early on at the far post. Skusta got, just got passed way too easily. A bit like, was it Leicester? 
before the break where that happened as well, where he just yeah. got passed by way too easily um, to, to cut inside. But overall, I mean, he should have had an assist, which would have at the time, I think, would have put us 3 1 up. He should have just squared it to either Palmer or Mujic. He said he shot, got saved. So that's. I didn't hate that. He, I didn't hate that he shot there. Uh, uh, on balance, he yeah, maybe so should have it, but I don't hate that well, he did make that as a choice. I mean, I get you, but like he's he's a fullback, and the others were in a better position than him. It's 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 always like, well, if you score, find it, you shoot, but make sure you score. You didn't, so yeah. you should have passed. You know, it's one of those, I guess. But in the grand scheme of things, I'll say six and a half. Are people going to be angry at me again and say I've been way too nice? Probably. Chelsea fanboy said four. <laughs> um, but I just think he's been in the grand scheme of things so good that even with the defensive issues that he had, it's still a six and a half, if that makes sense. It's not like I'm ignoring those and just giving him six and a half. I'm thinking in the grand scheme of things, it was probably like an eight and the few defensive issues that he had put him down to a six and a half is, is kind of my thinking. But we'll see how the boys see it. Oli, I'll go with you first. What do you reckon? Um, I would give Gusto a five. Thought he was the best defender, but like may today that wasn't really saying much. Yeah. Um, you know, was good in spells, went forward, did a few few important things, but wasn't really all there going back either. Um, like you say, uh, you was asleep at times. Uh, I'll go with a five, five, call it five and a half. Why not? Um, right. You know, it just, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think I'm struggling with how much real credit to really give the players, like for having the ball and like whatnot, because we were a man up for like most of the game. So it, it feels a little bit like that was going to kind of be a given. And it almost could be a bad thing considering how we didn't really do anything with, with it. In the second half, there was one point we had like 81% possession, you know, uh, and we hadn't done anything at all with it. And it, I don't know. It, it's a real frustration. Uh, yeah, Gusto gets a five and a half because he did fine. First, first, a six and a half from me, a five and a half from Oli. Adas, what would you give Gusto? What would you make of a performance like that? Again, has some issues where defenders go past him way too easily, has moments where he sh should maybe could have had assists, but also where he could have had assists if whoever was on the receiving end of his crosses should have just done a lot better. But in terms of creation, him and Palmer and maybe Mudrick, I guess to, in, okay, on occasions were certainly the ones that, that if we did anything, it was Gusto and Palmer, really. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously offensively, um, he did offer a lot. I I feel like he should have passed it or cut it back when he had that opportunity just because the angle was so tight. I mean, I wouldn't back anybody to score from that angle. So I feel like that's something where you expect some, you you, you hope that your players have a little bit more awareness, particularly. The it's shame to score from it because he'd rifle it under the net, under the roof of the net. But if you're going to hit it at, Kind of Reece like, James would get injured trying to swing his leg at the ball. Is that how he got injured? Ah, uh -huh, Reece James. Sorry, <laughs> I thought you meant that's how Chris got injured. <laughs> yeah, he probably. I don't think he's wrong to to try it though. I don't. I don't blame a player to back their own ability to finish from there. Yeah, I, I, it's also a case that now we lost. Now we we drew the game, so now it's kind of revisionism in terms of. Oh, uh, I, feel like, I feel like in comparison to like Sterling, you're just being very nice to Gusto here, Oli, because we've had many occasions this season where you could say yeah. the same about Sterling, back yourself for scoring, but he could have just squared it for a tap in and he didn't. So we all lost our shit at Sterling. It's no, yeah, but, uh, like, I, but I don't like think this score was even less because the angle was this quite isn't quite the same for me. That's not the same situation because I don't think necessarily that the pass was was a hundred percent a better option. Like that, everyone when he could when Sterling could have squared it everyone and their nan could tell that he should have done that. Whereas I personally didn't mind him taking the shot there. And I think I'm not the only one who thinks that I imagine. So uh, for me, it seems that it was like, I don't hate him trusting his own ability from a position. He thinks he can score from. Yes. And you can say the same for Sterling, but in Sterling's case, there was a very obvious decision to make. I mean, I, I guess I, I, I'm not, uh, for, for me, it was clearly the better option to pass, but I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree on that. Absolutely fine. Um, Adash, just quickly, did you give us Gusto a six or what rating did you give him? Um, I'll go for a 5.5. .5. Okay. Overall, then again, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. Six, but, um, yeah. I mean, should I drag it down to a six mine? Gives him a five and a half. I mean, let's not forget, he did get recalled because he was in, over international break. Sorry, say again. He was. He did get recalled from the France under twenty ones because he got injured. So I think he was ill, actually, in his case, if I'm not mistaken, uh, some sort of virus. Um, maybe that's also why he was a bit asleep at the beginning. You know, so that kind of 
leftover virus issues in his body. I don't know. Um, we move up the pitch. Moises Caicedo um, had one really good moment in the game. Otherwise, I'll be honest, basically didn't notice him. I mean, barely gave the ball away. Had 55 out of 58 com completed passes. Fair enough. Three out of three long balls. Pretty good. Why didn't he have a tackle? I don't know. Um, two out of two ground duels. One out of three average duels. Not bad, but I think what his stats show is that he wasn't involved the way he should have been. Why did he have nearly half the passes of, of by the issue? Why? I mean, I'll open Enzo quickly. Okay, Enzo had a lot more. Fair enough then. But even still, I still feel like Caicedo, not necessarily due to purely his own fault, but just didn't involve himself enough and not just on the ball. And I know part of the issue is that we had the ball so much. But how can you have zero tackles? Like, you know, you shouldn't have zero tackles. And th these are the things that I talk about. And I'm not, again, it's not a Caicedo as an individual issue. It's not, not at all. But this is what I talk about when I mention how we never have control of games. Not against Burnley, not against Leicester, not against um, which other championship team did we play uh, recently? Leeds. Not against any of these teams that are significantly worse than us. We control the midfield. We control the game. And Enzo and Caicedo very rarely have individually poor games. But... They, as a combination, they just are incapable of controlling the, the, the game. Well, as a combination under Pochettino, they are seemingly incapable of controlling a game, and that frustrates me. Like, how did you not get more tackles in? I don't know. Do I think, in the grand scheme of things, he was awful? No. Do I think he was good? No. So I'm going to give him a five. Um, Adas, what about you? Yeah, I, to be honest, didn't really notice him. There were a couple of moments where he made nice passes and there was one moment where he went forward and did something nice but um i think i think this is something that i said when he was at brighton and everyone said oh he could be this great number he could be this great six that is kind of like our holding midfielder for the future but i always saw him in a little bit more of a role um as a box-to-box -box player which i think is especially what he's been playing now and I, to be honest, don't really know if he if he has the capability to be playing as a number six. Um, but I think today, like you mentioned, he didn't have many or any tackles. And I think that's a symptom of the way Poch structured our midfield today. And then, I mean, having said that, I think it was um, a train wreck of a decision to take him off, which you can't blame him for. But I would also probably go with the five. Ollie, what about you? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one with Caicedo. Like you say, he didn't really notice him a lot in the uh, a lot in the game. Just thought he was bang average, to be honest. Um, but I I do get it with Caicedo with like a what well, I think Phelan put it in the chat earlier. Like you never watch him play and think, wow, he was really worth what we paid. You know, like and 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 you know that is that's not his fault because th it's the club's fault of what they paid for him but at the same time for that money you've got will you ever think that about any midfielder that's not called Jude Bellingham I guess <laughs> I don't know man I don't know but well I guess Jude Jude seems like he's proven it right and and yeah that's what I'm saying he seems yeah to be like you know, <laughs> and Caicedo listen I love Caicedo but he just wasn't great today at all I I, I don't know I, I I would give him a five Oh, I, I couldn't give him any more than that because I don't think he had a positive game. No, he didn't. Like there's a moment where you think, "Ah, oh, what a good player," but then other moments, I'm like, it's not that I'm like again, I got to touch on it. It's not like that I see him doing bad things. It's more that I see him not be where I feel like he should be sometimes, and not get tackles in where I feel like he should get tackles in sometimes. That that's often my my bigger issue than him getting things so drastically wrong. But hey. What can you do? Um, Enzo Fernandez then. Um, still don't believe that he should have started. Most certainly don't believe that he should have played the whole 90 minutes. But then again, he seemed fine for most of it, I'll be honest. Um, and had an all right game, I guess. He had the most passes. He attempted 98, succeeded at 68. So not 68, 86, of course. That would be drastic otherwise. 88% um, pass completion, which the way Enzo plays anything above 85, I'm all right with usually. Obviously, you want it above 90. But I think 88 is all right. Successful dribbles, two out of two. Successful long balls, <laughs> 13 out of 16, which is kind of crazy. Two out of uh, three out of five ground duels, zero out of four aero duels. But then again, one of them obviously was that equalizer. But why is he on John O'Shea? Is it even John O'Shea? Is it a different O'Shea? I don't know. But on O'Shea, anyway. Um, 
there was a few good tackles that I thought we put in. Uh, one early in the first half, a sliding tackle when to stop a counter of theirs. He was doing well physically on, on the sides as well, stopping them from, from getting chance. I thought he was one of our better players today, but still not amazing. So I, I'm going to give him a six. Um, Oli, what, what would you give Enzo? Um, I'll give Enzo a six and a half. Um, I thought there was just a few moments where he really seemed like he was actually making things happen on the ball and it then can, you know, make contributing to the game more than more than he does sometimes maybe it's because Caicedo was having a quieter game that we noticed um but I don't know Enzo stood out a little bit for me uh, I, I'll give him a I'll give him a no no I'll go with a six and a half. I'll give him a six you can do six and a half if you want to and I you know what I don't think I don't think anyone was apart from one player was worth more than a six today so fair fair enough fair enough um i'd ask then two sixes so far would you go along with that or did you think something different on enzo yeah i would also agree with the six i think um like you said just had a very very decent average game um played some nice passes but that's something that we come to expect and now having been here for over a year that's something that that he needs to be doing on a regular basis so i'm not going to bump him too high for that Mm -hmm. um and yeah, I think he was also left on an island, so I'm not going to put too much blame for him for the way everything kind of collapsed in the second, in the in the last quarter of the game. So I would probably agree with the six as well. Fair enough. Fair enough. And Adas, so I don't always take all of the words out of your mouth. Now, often, often, obviously, you might just disagree with me, but just in case we do agree, I'll let you go first as well. So it's not just me waffling. Um, Adas, on Gallagher, what did you make of him today? Obviously, got booked, got subbed off. Could have been sent off, if we're honest. Um, what did you make of him? Yeah, I mean, definitely not uh, not a great game, not a good game from Gallagher. I don't think he was particularly good today. I think that yellow card really, really got on my nerves because that was exactly 15 seconds after we scored. And I was like, are you trying to get a sent off just because they might not, they shouldn't have gotten their red card. He's like, oh, let me lay, level the playing field. So that really pissed me off because that was a completely unnecessary challenge. I think also, I don't know the exact stats, but from memory, it seemed like just had a lot of wayward passes and wasn't completely on it. Uh, unfortunately, I slightly, the stats slightly disagree with you. I've got a shocking stat for you, both, both oh. of you now. Um, Gallagher attempted 30 passes today. I'll give you a wild guess as to how many he completed. 30? Exactly. He's yeah. seemingly the only player that completed all 100% of his passes, which, sorry for you, Adash, now because you literally said the opposite, but I would, there's no way I would have guessed <laughs> or said that he had 100% pass completion as well. Today. Maybe I'm just hallucinating, but I can definitely remember one missed pass or maybe, oh, uh, I now, now my head's completely I mean, thrown. Maybe God knows, you never know with stats, right? Maybe they counted as a fucking cross and that's why it's not a bis- yeah. an incomplete pass, who to flip knows, right? But in general, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. What, what rating would you give him today, bro? I would probably give him I'd probably give him a four along with the other three defenders. Just not not a very great game. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ollie, I'm sure you were probably surprised at the fact that he completed all 30 of his passes as well. But what did you make of him? Um disappointing today? Because he's very often our best or the second best player behind Palmer, maybe third behind Gusto. Certainly wasn't the case today, was it? Yeah, it looked really, really lost today. I, I, I think we really suffered from having him be in the 10 today. Yeah. Um, you know, like in terms of when you're playing against a team like Burnley, I think you just need to have a little bit more about you in terms of creativity to be able to break them down because you know that at times they're going to sit deep. The red card obviously made that happen, sort of forced them to do that anyway. Um, and for as much as we had the ball and for as much as we were pushing to attack Burnley at times, uh, only 30 passes from Con is actually, I think that for an attacking player, I think that's really poor. It was what, what, there's a pass every three minutes it, well, when he's he playing in the 10. After 62, but yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, every two minutes, right? So uh, playing one one pass every two minutes, that doesn't really feel like enough for a player who's playing in the 10 against, you know, uh, 11 man and then 10 man Burnley. Um, you, I think there's got to be a bit more about you for that. And, um, I rate Gallagher he, he really highly. One touches, so it's not even like that he like kept dribbling around a lot and just gave it away. It's he most of the time that he touched the ball, he also passed the ball, to be fair. So it's, he just didn't get himself involved. And that's, that's the, what I mean. That's like, the and most I, rare and I really thing about Gallagher. Yeah, that, that exactly. Like, you know, and I really rate Gallagher. And so we've got to 
kind of we you know we've got to be fair and give Gallagher his um his kicking as much as we give him his flowers you know like and I, I thought he was really poor today I'd give him a, a three and a half I would say fair enough honestly I agree that he was really poor today today it was a exactly like what you said now obviously for a lot of the second half because he was subbed off after 62 uh, 62 minutes and we played like what 97 or whatever it was in total he was off the pitch for the majority of that second half. And it didn't exactly get loads better after he was there, to be fair. But even mm. still, to, this is a, another game where I'm like, does our manager have a brain? It just doesn't look like it. Like, you have Enzo there, who just came back less than 48 hours ago from a 10-plus hour flight. Um, why I say 10-plus hour? Because a, a flight from Buenos Aires to London takes between 10 to 14 hours. I literally looked it up, depending on wind, headwind, you know, wind from behind or whatever. So over 10-hour flight. Less than two days ago, I had one light training session yesterday. No, okay, Enzo was arguably one of our best players. So in hindsight, you can say it was all right. But we still don't know if this will not end up leading to an injury. You know, that's all I'm saying. But I still think we would have been better off today if Gallagher played instead of Enzo as a six today. Not because that he's so amazing as a six, but I think Burnley would have had less counterattacks if Gallagher was in this area, helping Casado stopping their counterattacks. I think that would... Not that Enzo was bad at this, but he just has more legs, right? So so Gallagher would just be better at this. While in this position today, not that he should have been as bad as he was. Absolutely not. And I'm going to give him maybe even, even lower rates than the new boys have done. But it's just bad for the manager. Why play him there? We didn't even press properly. Like, in the first 10 minutes, when Burnley had more possession than we did, we didn't even try to press them. I'm like, so why are you playing Gallagher as a 10 then if you're not even trying to press? What is the benefit of Gallagher then? But at the same time, other than, I guess, starting Sterling on the left and putting Murdoch on the 10, or Madueke on the right and Palmer in the 10 from the get-go, because Chukwameke is injured again, and Nkunku is obviously never fit, there's obviously a somewhat limited options, I guess. But yeah, I'll honestly even give him a three, um, which overall leaves us at a, at a three and a half. I just, it was just so not present today. He was just mm. like barely just the, the opposite ball. of everything he normally is. Exactly. Exactly that. Like he he gave three fouls away. Like I say, he could have been booked. He only had one out of six ground duels that he won, which for Gallagher is really poor. He had zero tackles in the game. Generally obviously I know he played as a number 10, but even still, there's only one defensive stat that even shows up, which is he had one recovery. When when you're like look at, at, at say Kaiseido, right? He had a clearance, an interception, eight recoveries. You look at Enzo, he had um, you know, two clearances, seven recoveries. Okay, he got dribble pass twice, apparently, but I don't know. It's just poor from Gallagher, I thought. Just poor from Gallagher. Oli, I'll also give you the opportunity to speak first before I do any waffling. Mikhailo Mujic, what did you make of him? Robbed of an assist, in a way, by the Zazi's arm. Um, could have had another assist, too. When he Probably, probably could have had three assists. Probably, to be honest. Could have, could, maybe should have had a goal, too. No, no, not maybe. Definitely should have had a goal. Probably too. should have scored as well. Yeah, that that's the thing. He's either he had almost like the opposite game to Gallagher. He was always really involved, um, and usually that would be a good thing. But a lot of the time, um, yeah, just I don't know. Same old Mudrick. You see it in flashes. He was playing well at times. Doesn't hug the touchline, but first to run inside. Uh, definitely should have at least try, made the keeper move when he uh, had that free shot from Jackson on the edge of the box. Yeah, um, yeah, just a, I don't know, man. Like, I definitely probably should have had two assists, and that's not his fault um, that they that that didn't happen. But I just can't shake the the feeling that really he wasn't really doing enough, and he was kind of part of the reason why it was so easy to get past our midfield today as well he just wasn't really contributing all that much i think i would give him a i think i'd give him a five because i can't i i couldn't give him i don't think he had a positive positive game today but i think um i, I just can't praise him that highly for it either fair enough fair enough i'm surprised by coming like this awful i think that's harsh for to be awful but hey everyone has their own opinion others only gave him a five you heard what Oli what, what, what Oli said. Um, what, what what would you give him? Can't forget that he obviously got us the penalty that you know took gave us the lead. Got that man sent off as well. Now you can argue like J, JV says it was a horrible touch that made that happen, but you know even still made it happen. Um, but what, what what would what did you think about Murray and what would you give him, Anash? Yeah, I feel like at least he was positive. At least he was willing to attack and at least he did try to make things happen 
Um, and he did that at least consistently throughout the game, which I think was was a good sign. I would be a little bit more optimistic in terms of rating and per- probably give him a six just because he can't do anything to control the assists and the lack of finishing ability of his teammates. So I think if he gets those assists, then I think we look at it in a more positive light, which I don't think you can put down to him as an individual necessarily. Um, and obviously, I mean, in from a macro view, I would also say it's a little bit disappointing given that I probably expected more in his first game back after what happened in the international break. But I these are the kind of performances where you hope he can build on these moments because he had a lot of moments and you hope he can build off of those and make them more consistent over the course. Yeah, of but it's just minutes. moments, isn't it? You know, like we've been here before. Yeah, but how often have we been here over the course of three games or four games where he starts and we say, oh, he has three moments every game? But because... it, it, while Pochettino say that's not going to happen anyway. Exactly. Which is the issue. Why? What did Poch say? Uh, like, no, just Poch never plays Modric like, consistently, uh-huh, does he? Yeah. So. See, I I think Modric was... It's difficult because obviously the, 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 the big chance in particular that he missed that's a, that was a, that really annoyed me. That that's yeah. a big reason for my, why my rating was as low as it was. Because I, you've got to do better there. You've just yeah. got to. I think at the time it was one-one, so you can obviously still make the argument there was still equally as much of a chance that we still bottle it. Like a three-one would have been much more decisive goal than an at the time two-one. Um, but if I go through his stats, they're actually really strong. Most of them. He attempted eight dribbles, six, uh, succeeded at six of them. We haven't had that in ages. Ground Yules had 14, won 10 of them, which is pretty good as well. Now, sure, he lost possession 25 times, but that's what I expect from a winger in a way. He had three successful crosses as well. Okay, he had 12 in total, but even still. Um, and, you know, a lot of these won't even show up because, you know, it's sh- goals that should have been assists, you know. Well, does this cross that went to Dezazi's and from Dezazi's arm into the goal, does it count as a complete cross? Probably not, right? So, for me, for me, it was actually by far his best game for us that he's had as a winger. Now, he's had better games recently as a 10, but as a winger, I don't think he's had even anywhere near as good of a game as he had today. Now, his shooting, he still needs to really work on at the moment because I, I firmly believe that he has one of the best shots in the whole team. You saw that, you know, that, that one shot where Gallagher laid it back to him and Mudrick hit it like kind of, well, not first time even, but with no backlift at all. And he hit that so hard and I got blocked. So, you know, it doesn't help us anything. But I think it was good today. Um, it's just that obviously he didn't score and the shame that the, the assists <laughs> didn't happen, which isn't his fault. I probably would have given him a, a six and a half today. I think um, that's very generous. I can't lie. I, 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 just, I, know, I know he should have had the assist and that's not his fault, but I, I don't know. He'd like it, especially like his, um, his set pieces and stuff today, like his corners, I didn't think were great either. But then again, better than when pretty I, I know, and, and we <laughs> and we scored from, and we scored from one of them, like you know, like yeah. sort of. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, I understand it. And JP says, "Why does Mudrik get so much sympathy?" For me, is why does he get so much criticism? <laughs> so that's what I think is a much bigger question. But yeah, I, I thought it was one of his. I've, I've not seen him this confident ever. At Chelsea, if I'm honest, now it's, is that surprising after scoring his taking his team to the Euros? No, it makes sense that he would be more confident today, but even still, yeah, I, maybe I, I was just expecting more from him since his performance. I don't know, yeah, again, I, I'm not saying he was amazing, and obviously, he kind of ruined it by by missing that chance. But if on sofa scoring, on sofa score, you got an 8.3, and sofa score are usually more harsh than, than lenient, so to get 8.3 on sofa score, you, you can't have been terrible. Um, but yeah, as I, I'm not going 8.3 by any means, obviously. Like I said, I said 6.5, which um, you said five and a half, didn't you, Oli? Or five? I think I said five. Yeah. And um, Adashi said six and a half or six? Uh, I said a six, I believe. Ah, yeah. And therefore we have a 5.5. <laughs> Overall, what does that leave us then? A six and a half, a five, and a six? 6.5 plus six plus five. Divided by three is a uh, 5.83. So overall, that gives us a six. Again, I understand if people disagree, but I'm not going to change my opinion for the people. Uh, we get to Co- um, Cole Palmer then. Um, 
I, I did feel a bit mean because for a lot of these others, I read out all the stats, good and bad, to you before I made you give a rating. And on the last two, obviously, that wasn't the case. But yeah, Cole Palmer, our talisman as usual, isn't he? Um, four out of five long balls, three out of three successful dribbles, three out of five ground duels, um, two two goals, obviously, uh, an outrageous Panenka penalty, which in hindsight, when you don't win the game, that obviously not his fault, but in hindsight, when you don't win the game, not ideal. Um, that obviously he scored it, so he's always good, but. Are we in a position to be cocky like that? I know people love it so much, but I'm like, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let, let's not talk about this too much. People just hate me for saying, oh, why are you mad? But I'm just like, bro, we're 11th. Don't stop panenkering. Just, just <laughs> take shit seriously. But anyway, um, great goal. The last one, obviously phenomenal assist by Sterling. Um, but yeah, by far our best player. The only one that does something really. Um, I honestly don't really remember... S- Dali, uh, Palmer doing much wrong other than in the beginning maybe on a few situations being a bit selfish or shooting a bit early and missing a couple of chances with that otherwise I thought it was really really good so now it's just a question of do I not rate him so highly because we didn't win because I think if this game finishes 2-1 I'd probably give him an 8.5 or an 8 at least but does that change because we conceded that goal arguably shouldn't I'm going to say eight anyway. Please don't kill me. <laughs> Oli, what were you good for? I'm not sure I would go as high as an eight in a, in a game that we struggled with so much. But like he couldn't really have done much more, I but, thought. Uh, you know, so like, he... interrupt you one more time. You know how you say we struggled so much? Just like It's not like I fully disagree, but we had 13 shots on target. Yeah, we had against 33 10... shots in total. Um, like, usually when we... Everyone's going to have the ball have against like 10 shots man Burnley. <laughs> Yeah, no, that is true. But we also have to remember who we are, right? We, we, we play teams and have three shots and are like, you know, and then on a day where we have 33, I feel like it's still, like, I agree with you. It sh- is the expectation against I, Burnley. I, I know, but I just, I don't think anyone, else, I, I personally don't think anyone else would say that we didn't struggle today. Yeah, no, we struggled. Uh, no, no, okay. I, I didn't really want to disagree with that. I just say that's why I'm asking the, the, the further question in terms of what do you mean by struggling? Because it wasn't chance creation that we struggled with today. That's what I'm trying to say. Like we I guess it, it was finishing and cohesion in the team is what we were really struggling with today, yeah. it felt like. Um, you know, the way that players were just like off the ball. Um, you know, the players were, for the first time in a little while, just totally going missing for like a lot of a game. Uh, but anyway, back to Palmer. Yeah, Palmer was one of the only people actually doing anything today. Um, was trying to make things happen all the time. Scored, um, yeah, outrageous Penenka penalty, in which I really liked. Uh, I know you, <laughs> a lot of you have your reservations, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, and I thought, uh, other than that, yeah, just was trying to make things happen. You know, scored two goals. What more could you ask for? So I, I don't know. Uh, you know, other, without him, we lose the game. So I'll give him a seven and a half. Fair enough. Maybe a seven and a half, isn't it? Uh, do you know what? No, do you know what? Fuck it. He's got an eight. I'll give him an eight. Fair do. But I was just going to say I might even be able to be convinced into a, into an eight, uh, into a 7.5. But I, I really, I, I'll let you speak in a second, Adash, but I really heavily have to disagree with this comedy about H. Naku. Um, they were speaking about Palmer and H. Naku says, remove the pens and he's an okay player. Nothing stellar for old Chelsea, of course. This is wrong. I'm sorry, but he scored six penalties, including today. Six. But he has... A total of goal um, goals and assists, I think, like, 28 now, including today. Is it 29 in total in all competitions? If you take six penalties away, that's still over 20 in all comps? Goals and assists? What do you mean that's okay? Like, nah, that's outrageous. That's outrageous. He is by far surpassing even Hazard's first season. Like, nah, I, I'm not having this. I'm not having anyone slating Cole Palmer. That is... Utterly unacceptable. But anyway, I'd ask. Um, two eights then, in the end. Would you go along with it? Do you think we've gone a bit too high? What do you reckon? I would go just a little bit lower for a 7.5. Just because I feel like, given everybody else's rating, like the penalty was incredible. The dopamine rush was crazy, but it was also a penalty. Um, but the second goal, he did take it well. And I think he does deserve his dues for that. Um, my one of my main criticisms was in the first half. I just felt as if he didn't really look up as often. Every time he got the ball, his his only idea was to take a touch and shoot every time. And we need players like that, especially players who do it from outside the box, like Palmer. But you don't need to be doing it every time. 
And I feel like there were times where he had better options to pass it out wide or to pass it to teammates, um, which he didn't do. And I think um, that in conjunction with the missed opportunities just kind of bumps down a little bit. I know the rating doesn't change, but I would probably... I'm still possibly convinced it does seven and a half. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, then you never know. But yeah, I would go for a 7.5. Not to say he wasn't great, and he was by far our best player today. Because I actually... I'm thinking that maybe it should be a seven and a half. Less so that I don't think he was good. But again, first of all, one of the goals was a pen, which is like different to like a normal goal. Even if arguably the finish for the second goal was at least not much more difficult than a penalty, but still it's open play. Um, but it's more like when I compare it to other games, Palmer's just been a lot better on other days. And there was points in the first half where I was like, isn't it weird how Palmer on some days has like just misses everything and then on other days, he just scores everything. Today, he seemingly managed to do both. <laughs> First, miss everything. And then all of a sudden, well, not score everything because it was a penalty and one other goal. But even still. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll push it under seven and a half, but it, it's very close. I could give you guys a poll. But honestly, you guys are such a bunch of negative pastels here today. So, what's the point? <laughs> um, let's, let's go to Nicholas Jackson, shall we? Um phew. That's a tough one because I don't, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think he was like bad, but he kind of like missed a lot. <laughs> so it's kind of like a bit strange. Now he had 10 out of 12 passes, but he's a striker, right? So ugh, I don't know. I created four chances, apparently. Um, not sure which four chances those were, but one of them was definitely the pass to Mudrick on the ex edge of the ball. Oh, yeah, true. Of course. Yeah, that would have been a big chance. Yeah, fair. Um, even that pass, I think he's slightly under hit, by the way. If he slightly hits that a bit hard, I think it's easier for Mudrick. Mudrick obviously should still score, it nothing to do with that, but it just could still do it a bit better. Uh, I don't know. Did the cutback from Mudrick, how does he not score? That was another one where he basically misses the ball. But I still think if we didn't have a striker like Jackson today, we'd probably create a lot less than we did. So it's like one of those where I think actually Jackson did a lot of good work that maybe won't necessarily be seen and will be outweighed. Yeah. And for me, it was like more, but it, for me, it was like every time he got the ball, he did something reasonably okay. But he basically just never got the ball today. Like he was isolated a lot. I remember thinking to myself, like, is Jackson even playing? Like halfway through the second half, because we just never really got the ball to him at all, and that's difficult because it's a bit like Cucurella's situation a little bit, where like he just really didn't touch the ball, and as a result, like, what can you really give him? But he has the added complication of every time he did get the ball, he did something all right. Like you know, like he was, you know, like you say about the layoff for Mudrick's pass. At least he's there. At least he's doing it. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's a tough one for him. I think I'll give him a, a a five. I think he was. I couldn't give. I don't think I could give him more than a five today. Yeah, I I, I don't think it's too far off a five. Adash, what do you reckon? Is a five fair? Would you give him something different? I mean, I agree with the general sentiment, but I feel like I would disagree that everything that he did today he did right necessarily. So I just feel like. In, in, an, in isolation, I feel like his performance would be a lot better because, like you said, he's the one getting into those opportunities and getting into those chances. And if we didn't have Jackson, then I don't think all of those chances which he ended up missing would have even been chances in the first place. But I feel like as a striker, you need to be doing better and at least take even like one of those. I can deal with a striker missing several chances and especially because he is the kind of guy who gets a decent volume of chances on a regular basis. But the fact that he isn't able to take even a single one of them, I know one of the shots he was extremely unlucky because the defender just kind of stuck his toe out and that kind of barely deflected it from going in. But I still feel like... Um, I feel like my... The, the, where he took the, the cross first time. Yeah, I think so. That was, well, to be fair, it was given offside, but actually we saw it wasn't offside, right? So to be fair. So yeah. Yeah, that point. yeah, but uh, I would probably go... I would probably... A 3.5 sounds harsh, but that's probably what I would go for just because I expect him to take at least some of those chances. But that isn't necessarily to say that I have a negative view of Jackson because I think he still offers a lot of positive things to the team. Fair enough. Fair enough. Honestly, I'd probably agree with, with Ollie and give him a five, which overall gives us a four and a half. 
But I see what you're saying. It's just for me. Now, obviously, if Jackson scored a couple of his chances today, we'd probably win. But we still scored two goals today. And I just really don't want to sit here and say, oh, because Jackson missed chances is why we didn't win. No, because we can't be awake after half time, And because we don't have bottle is why we didn't win today. Not because Jackson didn't score. J J Jackson helped us create a lot and players around him should have scored more because of help he did. Um, hence why I still don't think he deserves a, an average rating because of the misses and a few other moments as well. But I, I, I personally find it a three and a half a bit too harsh. Let's quickly get to the subs then. We made a, a couple of those today. Um, you know, sometimes we, may, we only make one or two. This time we made a whole three. Um, ignore the fact that one of those was only injury related to Malagusta very late on. Um, initially, uh, Madueke came on for Conor Gallagher, which meant Palmer moved into the 10. Excuse me, and Madueke played at, uh, on the right wing. Um, the second sub was then Raheem Sterling, surprisingly, coming on for Moises Caicedo. And then, obviously, at the end, um, Alfie Gilchrist replaced the injured Gusto. Um, Madueke honestly had one shot they should have done better with. Otherwise, can't think of anything he did. Um, I'll just uh, he, he looked all right. Like he kept the ball reasonably well. Like it's, it's hardly much of a compliment, but he, I don't know. He looked like he could have done something, even though he didn't. So uh, is is that something? Yeah, but he didn't have a single cross. He didn't have a single dribble. He didn't have like he had one shot. Yeah, you know maybe I mean? I'm being too generous. <laughs> apparently, yeah, apparently, he had more than one shot. Apparently, he had like three or four. One of them being blocked, but. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I I don't think we should give either of them a rating, to be honest. I just speak of them as a combination. First, by the way, okay. And then Sterling, a wonderful assist. Fair play to is really, really good. Yeah, incredible flick, to be fair. And then that header at the end. Um, oh, you, yeah. I, I appreciate people... More difficult than it looks fam. is what I will say, but he should score it anyway. I think the thing is probably more difficult than it looks for someone as tall as him, I think. It, 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 like, I think... Uh, uh, any player who's six foot plus in that position probably buries that header fairly comfortably, but I don't know, maybe just because it was him, it kind of landed on top of his head. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's very frustrating from Sterling because, of course, it just feeds into the narrative about how wasteful he's been and that only feeds the cycle of neg negativity around him and stuff, which doesn't help him and it doesn't help anyone in the squad. Um, so I appreciate pe uh, people at the bridge um, clapping him as well when he came on. He seemed Same. to be like, yeah, he seems to have a, a a reasonably good reception uh, from the bridge, even you know, after missing chances and stuff today. So, you know, he gets his credit where it's due. Yeah, he does. I find it very interesting today that Potts chose to bring Wadaweke on before Sterling. Because I'm not sure if this is a reaction to the fans last week or if Potts secretly was actually much more mad at Sterling than he obviously let, let, let show publicly. But considering everything that's happened over the last multiple months, I found this baffling because it would have actually suited us more. Not, not, not anything wrong with Madueke, and he had a good international break for the under twenty ones and everything. And he obviously scored that screamer against Leicester on the, on the last game before the break. But Mudrik has done so well as a ten recently that I feel like it would have made more sense to bring Sterling on for, on the left and push Mudrik into the centre rather than bringing Madueke on. And pushing Palmer into the centre. Then again, Palmer scored from when he was the number ten. So it clearly also worked out. But in terms of purely of going from what happened until today, I, I felt that would have made more sense unless he was trying to not play Sterling. Well, considering he brought him on ten minutes later anyway, why not first? Slightly surprising to me. But there you go. Adas, what, what did you make of both Sterling and Manuweke today? Yeah, I think Noni had a very limited sample size, didn't really get the ball too much. Um, like you mentioned, that one shot felt he should have done better, but at the end of the day, very limited opportunities as a sub, in my opinion. Um, Sterling, like you mentioned, I, I don't have the greatest of affinities for Sterling, which I have made abundantly clear in the group chat on several occasions. Yeah. But um, I I think the, the, flick, the flick was a good flick, um, but I think that header is just unforgivable because, uh, and I understand that he's short, but he did get to the ball and the way that the ball did hit his head. I don't think it was a case that he was struggling that much to reach it where he couldn't have angled his... Time. Yeah, no, I agree. I yeah. don't think he was too short. I think if he just jumped earlier or whatever, but in a way, Adash, 
because he is so small and will so rarely be involved in heading in the box. That's, that's kind of that's what why I was these guys at. don't work on it as much as, as others, and that's why he's not as good at heading, if that makes sense. So in a way, his height is still the reason, if that makes sense, even though it's not an excuse. Yeah, I, I hear that, but as a professional footballer, I can't let you off that easy for something, for an excuse like that. But yeah, I I would give all three of them an A's. I don't think there's enough to go off of. Yeah, no, I do agree. Let's let's not bother giving them ratings, honestly. Like we No, Gilchrist gets a 10. Just Agreed. Oh, Gilchrist, Agreed. Gets, I agree. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 we're going, what? Uh, that, that, that was quite simple. <laughs> so the chat can be mad. That's how you're giving a 10, man. We drew 2 2. <laughs> Gilchrist was on the pitch when we conceded. Was he even? Guys, we're secretly we're giving him good ratings. So whoever watches this will buy him it's for so more. Crazy. So we make more pure profit. <laughs> Damn right. Uh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, we probably should give Madueke a rating. He played over half an hour in total with injury time. But I mean, he had nine passes out of 11. Fairs. All right. One tackle. But again, no Not dribble. Not many, no though, is it? In half an hour. It's the same thing as Gallagher. It's like get into some positions. Come on. Like... Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It just felt like. Because then Palmer was more central and Madueke was behind Palmer, that meant Madueke didn't get the ball. If yeah. anything. Because obviously Palmer controls everything we do. So if so, if you're behind Palmer, then you're not getting the ball. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's finish this one off with a rating for... Let's do it up here because it looks a bit better. Pochettino. And then I have one more tweet that I want us to look at together to, 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 to really finish it off. But Poch, the team, honestly, other than my whole issue with starting Enzo which so far at least looks like it didn't cost us yet. But, you know, I, it's another one of those. I just don't understand. Every week, man, we are so asleep and so sloppy straight after halftime. And that co equalizes essentially what cost us the whole game, right? That's because without that equalizer, we never go so offensive, take, you know, Caicedo off for Sterling, then we probably are in a different shape to to defend it at the very end. You know, if, if we just stay one nil up, don't concede an equalizer, we probably naturally eventually score at 2-0. No, we might have conceded an equalizer later on, sure, but, you know, let's say we don't concede an equalizer, we probably make it 2-0, the game's easy. So, and the real issue is how slowly we came out of half-time, and we say that, we all agree that we were also terrible the first 10 minutes. So, and again, the same joke I make nearly every week is every time the team speak to the manager they are terrible as soon as they don't speak to him for 10 minutes they get better this happens at the beginning of the first half happens at the beginning of the second half why does it keep happening also you watch that first half and i know we scored a goal late on but were you happy with it were you happy with the midfield control why don't you change something why not why like you you we were playing against bandy okay who do you have on a bench that can score a header because you decided to know now broya the only one is cassadai why do you not bring him on everyone knows he's good at heading he's physical then in the post-match press conference, Poch sits there and says we need to be stronger against a physical team. Yet you have players on the bench that are physically stronger and you don't use them. Why? Why? Yeah, I don't get it either. Like it feels like he's making a rod for his own back. It yeah. it just feels like he's he's I've said this about Pochettino for so long, is that it feels like he can only coach the club in a way that he feels comfortable in doing. And that he, and because of that, he's more inclined to do it in a way that he makes it more comfortable for him than comfortable for the players. And the players need that comfort for their development. And and that there's just a fundamental mismatch there. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's like, is anyone in on him still? I, I still think there is some people, at least judging by my replies on Twitter sometimes. But I also kind of agree with what JP says. I'm not rating Poch anymore. I'm just straight up Poch out. But that makes it a bit boring. So, Oli, what rating would you give Poch on a day like today? Like, it's it's weird. Is all of it his fault? No, obviously not. How much is his fault? It's difficult to judge. But I just hey, think I just, stops I, were weird again. I just think everyone was at fault today. Like, no, everyone sucked. Nobody was that good. Um, I, so, I, I would say Poch was probably among the worst of everyone. So, I'll give him a four. All right. Adash, what would you give him? I'll probably go a little bit lower. I just feel like the the substitutions that he made, particularly Sterling for Caicedo, I think that just really, really, really made it an unstable game for us. I also, but it I don't know, maybe also, right? like Sterling assisted the Palmer goal that got us the lead. To be fair, to be fair, that is true. But I also feel that particularly once we took the lead in the two minutes that we actually stayed in the lead, you could have brought on somebody like 
uh, Casade, somebody who's played a grand total of like 13 minutes since we recalled him from his loan spell for, for absolutely no reason. Yep. And I also and I also do feel like maybe this is too unfair of me, but it is at the end of the day coaching that our set pieces have consistently been completely garbage. And I know we're bringing in somebody at the end of the season, but that also falls under the manager that we've consistently, time after time, set piece after set piece, been so poor and have no sense of cohesion and defense. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure if we currently do have a set piece coach or not. I, I'm not sure if one of Poch's assistants is a set piece coach. Obviously, we used to have Anthony Barry, as most people would know, um, who obviously left to Bayern Munich last year at some point um, to join Thomas Tuchel there. Um, he was our set piece coach. We were also terrible with him <laughs> being the set piece coach. And when he first joined, we were good. But then the longer he was here, the worse it got. Um, under Lampard, Potter, Tuchel at the end. Didn't really matter. We were just bad at set pieces. Now I don't know if we have one, so hopefully the Brentford guy can save us. You said three and a half, did you? I said three. Yeah. Um, You know what? I'm in around that realm between a three and a four, so to make it less complicated. Also his face. (laughs) It pisses me off. Yeah, and, and he's English. I know it's just you see. I'm I'm glad that I am not English because if I was English, people would call me really racist for for constantly uh, blaming his or slating his bad English. But because English is not my first language, I'm allowed to do this. So well, I suppose I, you speak from a from a place of authority on it, right? Like you know, you exactly. uh, like you are the in the same situation as him. Exactly, and I haven't lived in a, in an English speaking country for ten years. So and I can speak English now. I know it's a bit different when you grow up you know speaking german because it's a bit more closer to to english than than spanish is but even still man like if you live somewhere for 10 years and you don't speak the language properly properly what have you been doing like he's insanely rich like has plenty of time on his hands maybe plenty of time is a bit unfair but there was time between taking jobs between being a psg he already had three months of knowing he would take over at chelsea could have done any 10 scores, but what did he do? Nothing. Set in Barcelona all day and speaking Spanish, not learning English. Anyway, this is again unnecessary now. But I want to just highlight one tweet that, that Pice put out a few minutes ago. Essentially, data by Opta. Um, data, data, data. Because they love it at Chelsea, don't they? So, so hopefully, hopefully, egg barley and, and etc. shall we call it, we'll see this as well. Chelsea have now conceded 47 goals in the Premier League this season. Excuse me. Equaling the amount of goals they conceded the whole of last season. This is now 10 games. To go. We have, including today, played 28 of 38 games. We've already conceded the same number of goals as we did last season. Our current um, goal difference is plus two. Scored 49, conceded 47. So if people say, oh, but we've been attacking wise good, that shows you quite how bad we have been defensively. Because we are the better team than pretty much most teams that we play against. And yet still, we only scored two more than we conceded, even though most people would agree our attacking in the grand scheme of things or our goal scoring in the grand scheme of things this season has actually been good. Unbelievable. And then, then it gets even even better and even worse. Chelsea have conceded between the 50, uh, sorry, <laughs> 45th and 60th minute in 11 fixtures this season. 11 wins in 28 games, um, the total stat. 11 wins, 7 draws. 10 defeats in 28 games. And this is why when people say, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely beat Burnley, we'll definitely beat Sheffield, and we'll probably beat United, and all of these things. I'm like, where has this confidence come up, come from from everybody? Before today, we had 27 games, 11 wins, 6 draws, 10 losses. Where's this confidence coming from that people think, oh, we'll win this, we'll win that again? It's like, honestly, during the international race, people forget about how bad we really are, and then they're like, oh pretend and then there's a real harsh realization every time um, we come back that actually we're terrible and we touch on this plenty obviously five games in a row conceding two goals it's just how Oli, how do you think we managed to get to here after last season by before potter got sacked having the third best defense in the league how did we go from that to this it's just a difference in style and different style of play like you know like that you know, nobody's going to say that Potter's style was any good either. Um, you know, like he might have had us as the third best. Control, yeah, the third best, you know, uh, they might have called him the first third best defensive manager in the league, you know, for the numbers. But at the same time, you know, like we literally couldn't buy a goal. We literally couldn't. And, and, and 
And this season, now we're scoring a lot more than we were last season, and now we're letting in a lot more as well. So it, I don't know. It, but, but can I just quickly say, just super quickly, one thing in terms of that we're scoring a lot more. We still have less goals than Brighton, Newcastle, the same as West Ham. No, but relative to last season, mate. No, not, sure, not... sure, sure, sure. But I'm, I'm still saying like we scored 49 goals. Arsenal have more, Liverpool have more, City have more, Villa have more, Spurs have more, West Ham have the same, Newcastle have more, Brighton have more. Do you know what I mean? Like that is eight teams that have more or the same number of goals as us. Yeah, like, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting that down, but that yeah, wasn't no, really I, I, my point. More for clarification about what. Yeah, but just you know, just like compared to last season, we're scoring more, but we're also letting more in, and and as a result, that it, it's making the results really difficult, and that ultimately comes down to the style of play, the different style of play of the managers. Pochettino has always been a bit more attacking than Potter has, you know, in my view at least, uh, and so I don't know, like. The, I don't know where we go from here, man. Like I, I, I just feel like every time we have so many false dawns this season as a team. Like every time it feels like we want to move forward and we're actually starting to build some results and get some momentum going together, we just like pull out some bozo game like this where we can't can't struggle in a, a win against ten man Burnley. It's not good enough, man. It's just not good enough. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, we were playing United on Thursday. I didn't realise that until today that we're playing United on Thursday, but we are. Don't think we're winning that. Maybe we'll draw, but I don't think we're winning that. Sheffield United away, don't think we're winning that. Um, Everton at home, maybe we'll scrape a win there, but it's Sean Dyche, so chances are we'll go a bit like today. Um, then we're getting battered by Man City in the FA Cup semi-final. Then we're getting battered by Arsenal away. Then we're getting battered by Villa away. And then maybe we'll get a draw against against West Ham. Like a couple of the, like people were talking, oh, we're getting seventh. Some people were even trying to tell me we might still get sixth. Now, after today, we're currently feeling very pessimistic. I'm like, where's the next win coming from? <laughs> uh, even West Ham at home, man. Who knows if you can beat them lot. Um, Forest away? Nah, away. We don't win, do we? Maybe last day of the season we win again. Bournemouth at home. <laughs> <laughs> at least we're not, relegated. we're not getting relegated. Yeah, yeah. we're staying up, lads. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we, hey, we didn't even celebrate today with this point. We have secured the magical forty points. Right. Get yeah. in, you know, minimum requirement. <laughs> forty <laughs> points, come on! Um, but yeah, I'd ask. I ask you the same question: How, in your mind, have we gotten from where we were last season to this season? Like the the, the, the sad thing about it is that we were bad last season without scoring but being decent defensively and now we are bad this season with scoring but conceding loads so we're just we've just gone from one bad to the other bad but we've got no better <laughs> like it's just so bad it's like it, 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 as a as a as a collective as a grand scheme situation it's just i cannot believe that we actually managed to not get better from last season like honestly i i would have put everything every penny every thing my my family anything I would have bet on the fact that we'd at least be better than last season now of course there's still a few games left so in theory we could but we're in reality we're not really even if it's a couple points more and a couple goals better than we scored and obviously we got further in the FA Cup that's purely because of a better cup run I just can't fathom how we managed to like the first year is like okay you made mistakes you learn we did another year and nothing got better in the grand scheme of things. Nothing. It's just so, so demoralizing and frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I'm like in in college right now. I'm studying statistics, but I don't care what the statistics say when it comes to Chelsea because at least feeling-wise and emotion-wise, this season has been just as bad, if not worse, than last season because at least last Definitely season... feels like that at times, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, last season, at, at least to me, was kind of a write-off from at least when things from went completely we off the rails. It was a <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I think at that point, it was more optimism looking forward to next season and saying, okay, how can we improve on this? But now I don't even see how we can improve on this because I just know Pochettino is going to stay for next season. Um, and I just don't see how things get... Things might get marginally better, but I don't see how things get sustainably better for the future um in any case even with a different manager and even and as long as we have the same owners same sporting directors i just don't i just think this trajectory will continue or will stay just as bad yeah that is the worry that is the worry that 
that that's right. That's what makes it more frustrating, I think. I think Oli, you just agreed on it. It just feels like it's worse. We all know it's when we deep it and think about it a bit more objectively, we all know it's maybe ever so slightly better. But because yeah, it's but, the fact, but if you feel it, it's legit, right? Like, you know, like yeah. if it feels like it's worse, it's worse. Exactly. Be yeah. But why does it feel like that? Because it's the second season of this in a row. And that's yeah. why it just feels like if it you can stomach one bad season. Remember Joe's Abel was 16th, you know, we came 10th. We knew the next season would be all right. Obviously, none of us expected us to win the league the next season, but that's what we were used to. You finish 10th, oh, it's fine, win the league next season. Now we finish 10th and we're now 11th. Like, this has never happened to in any of our lifetimes. We've never experienced this. I was, and, you know, some people may, oh, I have a second club. No, my local team, right? We're playing the fifth division of Austrian football. The five-month-long winter break finally ended yesterday. Went to the game. We were playing shockingly. 1-0 down. We were by far clear at the top of the table, right? So we should be beating anyone 5-6-0. Everyone. But we're one nil down. We're playing awfully. That second half, like honestly, when you even even the worst Chelsea game in comparison to that, we, we look like everyone looks like Messi compared to what I saw yesterday. But it just it just felt so different. Like it was just like it just obviously fifth division and less money. But it just I was just like I was just I honestly I just felt content being stood there. I'm like finding none of this commercial bullshit and I need to worry about mm. we've spent a billion and I need to sell homegrown players to to make up pure profit and because it's making it not fun. I, yeah, that's, <laughs> I, that's, I hear you. Exactly. Like, we're selling all the players that I have any identification to. Now we're selling a lot of players and we're building new ones. Like I like Mudrig, I like Palmer, I like Gustav. Like we're building these new things, sure. But imagine you being a, a fan of a club for 20 years more, right? No matter, depending on how old you are. And then everything you loved about this club, other than the stadium and the badge, is gone. And that's essentially what we've experienced in the, in the last two years. Like, other than Reese James. But because he's basically always injured, it's also him. And now, not only, and now the, Pochettino has also taken Thiago Silva away as well. So there's another one that we all like, liked and, and, and you know, have attachment to. He's now also not used anymore. So it's just like they've just taken everything away from us. Like all of it. They've just taken it all away. And the worst thing, they, they sat a Spurs legend on top of it to do it all. Like when you think about this, it's like, you know, these people might be billionaires, but it would have helped them just speak into a psychologist at some point because fans are important in football. And you've ruined all of our psychology. Like you've ruined all of us. All of us. Like you should literally be paying billions, not for players, but for our fucking therapy costs. Like that's what you should be paying for, man. It's, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace what they've done to us. Egg Bali has one person has shaved so many decades off of my life. It's not even funny. Like yeah. genuinely. Literally. No, that's literally. a little funny. <laughs> wow okay thank you thanks mate appreciate it <laughs> uh, hey to be honest with the way it's going at chelsea maybe i prefer it to be a few years less do you know what i mean because <laughs> mate imagine if it's like this in 50 years do you know what i mean uh, i'll be happy if it ends um but yeah no not yet you know don't worry about me i'm good <laughs> just when i'm 78 you know maybe 78 is better than 85 if we're still fucking dead do you know what i mean um, you, go, you you know it's bad when you got lost talking about death on stream <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's about time we wrap this one up. But yeah, hey, another therapy session that at least helped me feel a bit better. But hey, uh, the one thing I like about this week, at least we have a midweek game that either can make things worse or can make things better. But we have an unknown very soon. So therefore, we will automatically spend less time thinking about what happened today. While if we have like a whole week or 10 days until the next game, we'll just have to sit and dwell on this for God knows how long, right? So. Unfortunately, that also means we get new Pochettino quotes in two, two or three days, which is... And we also get a new disappointing experience alongside it in a few days. <laughs> exactly. But hey, we also get... Uh... Hey, if, if what I say and the only game will win still this season is Bournemouth, then Poch ain't staying. So, something. <laughs> something. Um, but Every yeah, cloud, um, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. I think we'll wrap this up, ladies and gentlemen. Please do check out Oli, um, both on his Twitter and his podcast. You can see both ads on the screen. Oh, link, yeah. down in the, link to his podcast is down in the description. Please do check it out and follow them. Absolutely fantastic podcast that you should be checking out. Um, Adash, obviously, I know you're not particularly active on Twitter, but if you do want to follow him, you can see it on screen or the link down in the description below. Of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. That would be wonderful. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button as well on your way out. Just one click of a button that really helps me and doesn't cost you anything. And if you don't have a Google account, please make a Google account. Subscribe and like. That would be nice. Do you know what I mean? Um, just use a VPN if you're, concerned, if you're concerned about um, security. But 
multiple VPNs available. But if you know anyone of VPNs and they want to sponsor me, you know, bring it in. <laughs> but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you very much. Up the chills. <laughs> Upwards and onwards, I suppose. And we will see you next time.